brokerage called World Financial. Uh, how many of you have heard of them? Okay, that's a few, but uh, not, not the whole group. So I'll give, uh, I'll say as much as I can uh, within 20 minutes. This presentation is uh, by no means going to be exhausted, but afterwards, uh, I'll have a chance to talk to me, so if you have other questions, I uh, can ask you afterwards. So our main services that we offer, well, obviously, financial services. So the first and foremost service that we offer is insurance. Uh, this would be life insurance. The two types of permanent insurance, which are universal life, and whole life, those are permanent products, uh, as well as term insurance, uh, depending on what your need is, annuities, and segregated funds. Savings, we can help you set up TFSAs, our RSPs, our EFPs, each of those have their uh, pros and cons. Uh, mutual funds, uh, I am not personally mutual, life, mutual fund licensed. I am licensed for uh, life and investments. Uh, mutual funds is a money license, but we do have people in our company who are mutual fund licensed. And we also help people, I'm not actually in the process of helping a client with final expenses. So final expenses are expenses that you incur upon passing away, such as will, estate planning, and funeral concierge. What I do, you know, we are a brokerage, and uh, I will be the laser pointer at work, but I'll just use the human pointer. So we offer several services. These are this is a, a bit small, so this is life insurance, RRSDs, mortgage and debt, category of useful funds, our ESPs. These are the logos of the companies that we do business with. We do not own a single product. There is no such thing as a world financial group brand like insurance. <coughs> so these are logos of the companies we work with. Uh, this is Ibari. Uh, a very popular one that I've done some business with and maybe you know somebody who would benefit from this is Canada Protection Plan. And if you know people who are hard to insure, they don't want to get life insurance, either they have white coat syndrome and they don't want to go to the doctor, and some people even know they're healthy and have white coat syndrome, or maybe they do have a condition, chances are Canada Protection Plan can do a policy for them. Uh, IA, Industrial Alliance. One of the other companies that we get a lot of business from is Four Pillars. And Four Pillars helps people who are badly struggling with debt. And in particular to uh, avoid bankruptcies. Why there's a need? Well, this was a study done by CIBC. 91% of Canadians hold 9% of the wealth. That's, that's an unfortunate stat. Nine, and the 91% of Canadians are unprepared, unadvised, and uneducated on what they need to have to retire. Now, does anybody here, you don't have to put up hands, but does anybody here think you know somebody who hasn't really given enough thought to their retirement? And no disrespect, there are many people who don't want to retire. God, I, I, I confess I'm one of them. I don't ever want to retire. However, there are many people who are working beyond retirement that probably are in jobs, even if you don't want to retire, you don't want to be doing the job you're doing in your retirement. No, and the example, the, how many elderly people readers in places like Walmart have you seen that you think, I don't really think this person wants to be there. 
percent of Canadians are prepared for retirement, and these tend to be the ninth percent of the people that have the 91 percent. Well, these people are prepared. They've been advised. They've talked to somebody to advise them on what they need, and so they're educated. We try to bring that education and awareness to that 91 percent. And that is why our fundamental mission statement is no family left behind. Now, no shouting out answers, no raising hands, but just ask yourself, who do you know or think you know that would benefit from receiving better financial information? It can be yourself, can be somebody you know. No. Financial protection is what we need it for. And this is the way to build up your financial protection. We call this the birthday cake. You know, because it's because it's later. Actually, it's probably more like a wedding cake than a birthday cake. Most of you are gonna have your birthday. But the bottom layer, the fundamental layer, layer at the bottom is your protection and your retirement. Above that, so once you've looked at that, then you want to look at your debt management. So that would include things like your mortgage, your credit cards. And the third layer would be emergency. And a lot of people skip that layer. Emergency is something like what would happen to you if you had a heart attack? And heart attacks does not mean to be fatal. So what would happen if you were diagnosed with cancer? So for people who have cancer in their families, most cancer is not fatal. But cancer can do something like take you out of work for six months. Are you prepared for that kind of an eventuality? And then at the top would be investments. You put emergency before investments because if you have if you focus on your investments and you have an emergency, there go your investments. Life insurance. Why do you need it? Easy rule to remember. Fortunately, I don't carry change anymore, so I don't actually have one of these pockets, and I need to see one of these once a month. Dying. But it's an easy way to remember what we need it for. Debt. If something were to happen to you, how would your debt be covered? Income. Again, if something were to be happening, were to happen to you and you've got people dependent on you for income, how would you be covered? Mortgage. Mortgage is a fundamental reason to need life insurance. You can see screen here for your mortgages and myself for the life insurance. And the final one that we've touched on is expenses. And we do get a lot of people that we talk to about funeral expenses. One of our product providers is called Everest. And they are a division of the Avari Insurance Company. And they specialize in funeral insurance. So, mortgage life insurance. One of the biggest reasons people need life insurance is to cover their mortgages. And when I talk about mortgage life insurance, that is what the lenders offer. And given the color of the flag, you could probably guess what I think of it. Mortgage life insurance. What happens is you take out a mortgage with a lender, such as CIBC or RBC, and they ask you to check a box on the form for life insurance that covers you. You think you're covered if you pass away.
But mortgage group life insurance renews every time you renew your mortgage. Now when you take a mortgage out, you take out a mortgage at a finite term, like a five year term or a 10 year term. But you know you're not going to pay off that house, especially with house prices in the GTA. You're not going to pay off that house in five years. So your mortgage life insurance would renew every time you renew the mortgage. Guess what happens to the price of life insurance when you get five years older? One of the rules about life insurance, and I, I didn't put this in the presentation, but it's worth mention. Life insurance <coughs> never gets cheaper. Insurance is actually the only product I can think of where the price of it, just think of your car insurance, the price of insurance depends on who buys it. You know, one of those cans of Pepsi that you bought, you might, it, the price might vary depending on which retailer you're going to. But 7-Eleven is not going to charge me a different price for that can of Pepsi than anybody else in the room. But life insurance will. Life insurance never gets cheaper. And the other rule that we say with life insurance uh, is we call it the no free lunch rule. You get what you pay for. So mortgage life insurance renews every time the mortgage renews, which means it never gets cheaper. The lender owns the policy. So you are paying for something that isn't yours. The lender owns the policy. The lender is the beneficiary. So that means if you pass away, the proceeds from a mortgage life insurance policy taken by the lender go to the lender. Your mortgage is all paid off. Maybe you have peace of mind. Maybe. The danger in that is the post-claim underwriting, which means at the time of passing away, they'll take a look at your health. And they might challenge paying off your mortgage because, oh, you had condition X, Y, Z. At which case, it's too late. So let's take down the red flag. Your own life insurance. You take out your own life insurance. You arrange the life insurance with a life insurance provider. You take out your own term life insurance. You can take out a policy that stays throughout your payment of the mortgage. So your mortgage on day one is with CIBC, and five years later, Scotiabank comes and they've got something better. They're not going to touch your life insurance. That's yours. So it stays with you throughout the payment of the mortgage. And since it's staying with you, the rate is not going to go up. You own the policy. That policy is yours. You choose the beneficiary. So you can choose for the money to be paid to your spouse, or your children, yes, it puts the onus of paying the mortgage on them, but at least you know that your spouse or your children are getting the coverage or whoever you designate. And the underwriting is at the time of issue. So you'll be asked all the, all the standard questions. Have you ever got a heart condition or cancer or diabetes or any of these questions? But the underwriting is done at the time of issue. So if you pass the underwriting at the time of issue, there's no surprise. You're, you're not going to find out later on that you don't have coverage. And when you take out your own life insurance, that's the blue line. Let's say you take out a half million dollar mortgage, which means you've got a lot of money to pay off the other half of the house if you bought one in the GT. But if you take out a half million dollar mortgage and you're paying it over 35 years, mortgage insurance actually declines in how much it, it 
cryptocurrency because it renews every time you renew the mortgage. You can structure your own policy if you want, so that it, the benefit declines, or you can keep the benefit level. But for example, let's say you own a home for 20 years, and you know, maybe you only owe 300 or 500 thousand dollars on it. You might still want 500 thousand dollars because you know, after 20 years, <coughs> maybe I don't want to keep the house after a spouse has passed away. But if I want to sell this house, I got to invest 100, 200 thousand dollars into upgrades, or this house isn't going to be hard. To sell. So that happens a lot. The other side that we do is, is uh, on the investment side, and pin, sin, and pin, they rhyme, and they're numbers. Everybody, because we don't live in a cash society anymore, everybody has a pin number. Show of hands, how many of you know your pin number? The text, okay, it's the number you punch in onto the machines every time you do a debit transaction or go to a bank machine. Okay? Uh, hopefully you have it written somewhere if you don't know it. But SIM number, social insurance number. How many of you know your social insurance number? Or at least, if you don't have it memorized, you have it at your fingertips if you ever have to provide it when you do your taxes. FIN. How many of you know what a FIN number is? One person. What's a FIN number? A financial insurance number? Uh, you got the F and the N right. Financial independence. Yes, yes. Financial independence number. And that's how much do you need to be able to retire? How many of you think you know how much you need to be able to retire? Okay, a few. So, we need to save for retirement. What investment return do you need based on you know, what's available in the market and what you've got to invest? This rule that I'm going to illustrate is called the Rule of 72. And it's not mathematically precise to the penny, so don't try and punch the numbers on your calculator afterwards. But it's a very good approximation, and it was coined by Albert Einstein. So something like Albert Einstein coins this. Uh, I'll, I'll give him a lot of credit. 72 divided by the annual rate of interest is the number of years it's going to take your money to double. So if you are making 4% interest, 72 divided by 4 is 18. So if you invested 10,000 at age 29, 18 years from that will be 47, you'll have 20,000. 18 years from that will be 65, you'll have 40,000. Okay? So your 10,000 became 40,000 over 36 years. Let's say you can do a little right. Let's say you can do a little better and get six percent. Seventy-two divided by six is twelve. Now your money doubles after twelve years. So that ten thousand you put in at age twenty-nine doubles in twelve years at age forty-one. Again at fifty-three. Again at sixty-five. Now you've got eighty thousand at sixty-five. We'll try. 8%, now it doubles every 9 years, so between 29 and 65, it's had 4 chances to double, so now it's reached 160,000. And let's say you can do what the banks are doing. <coughs> when you put your money into a savings account, how many of you think a savings account pays about 1 to 2%? You know, your, your regular standard bank savings account. Do you think the banks are earning 1% to 2% on the money that you put into your savings account. 
people say that no matter how much the economy struggles, whether the economy is good, whether the economy is in a recession, very few people ever worry about the banks going out of business. 12%. Money doubles every six years. So 29, 35, 41, 47, 53, 59, 65. Every 12 years, your money has doubled. And that 10,000 can become 640,000. You know, and who would like to earn what the banks are earning? <coughs> A lot of us. Okay. So, when we talk to people, you know, we ask you, think about what your financial goals are. I'm going to give you a few examples because I only have 20 minutes. Uh, but financial goals. You want to save on your income tax. Learn to save and grow money. Reduce or pay off your mortgage. Protect family from loss of income. Have something to pass on to your prop, your beneficiaries. <coughs> Education funding for your children. Retire early and comfortably, and that requires you to figure out your FIN number. Pay off your credit cards, debts, aging parents. Purchase a home, or make some kind of a major purchase and maybe something else. Now, I'll re-ask the question that I asked earlier. Could be yourself, could be somebody you know. Who do you know <coughs> who would benefit from this kind of information? Okay, and I've got sheets over there. If you can think of people who would benefit, I've got sheets over there. And we can talk about it. And I offer free consultation and financial needs analyses to people. So, yeah, if you can't think of anybody who might benefit, here are some, some hints. Somebody recently married, recently has a baby, purchased a home, or wants to purchase a home. Maybe, maybe co-workers, family, in-laws, your best friend. We all like to look after our friends. Someone you eat lunch with, neighbors, someone who talks about money. Someone who talks about money but can't seem to figure out what to do with it. Like the weather. Everybody talks about the weather, but nobody ever does anything about it. Can't really do much about the weather, but money, you can play sports. People who are entrepreneurial. Uh, we also offer the chance to get into business. That's how I got into this. Teachers, military. If you're bilingual, you'd be a great business partner. Um, why should you have to say? Um, boss, aunts and uncles, self-employed. The list goes on and on. So, if you get a picture, that's my, that's me. And uh, just. I'm the same here tonight, except I didn't quite wear the same tie. And that's my that's my website. So I'll be over at this table here. You know, people you think of. I've got sheets where you can uh, put in, put names. So we'll chat. And uh, I hope I've been able to so much as impart one thing to you.